I've loved horses ever since I can remember. I had a saddle before I had a horse. It was a Western saddle and I used to put it on a, a wooden stand and watch the Lone Ranger reruns. I did take a break for college and law school, but two years after law school, I said, I've got to get back into them. By that point, I had changed to dressage. I was always a Western rider, 4-H trails. I was lucky enough to train for five years with an advanced level eventing rider, Adrienne Iorio, back in Massachusetts. Then I moved to Texas and started the Horse Human Relationship Program with my nonprofit Tapestry Institute. We use different ways of knowing and learning to reconnect to the natural world, and for me, that's about horses. She's a natural horse woman, and I, I appreciate the fact that she has a huge amount of respect for the horse, and um, and that comes through in her training as well. I've done kids, um, adults, senior citizens, done English, Western, bareback, um, mostly a classical dressage foundation. When I met Joe. I started, I started off English and doing dressage, and then she got me writing into Western, and now I'm hooked on Western writing. So while I was thinking about how to teach people, I came up with the, con with the ideas of balance, center, and connect. So you want to be balanced when you ride, you want to be centered, which is below your belly button, and then you can connect with the horse. This is also psychological. You want to be quiet when you're riding. You want to, you want to let everything else in your life go away. Because if you can be balanced and centered that way, you can feel the horse in all the ways that you can feel them. I think a person can learn a lot just by trusting the horse and the horse trusting you. And when that trust forms, it's like you can do anything together. And when you that communication is open and you know how to communicate to the horse and the horse understands what you want, you can do anything. And I think it's a really neat experience to ride a horse and to ask for something without being aggressive or mean and the horse responding and saying, yes, I trust you, we will do that together. What I really want to learn is how to understand horses and understand that their thought process and how they view the world is different than ours. And when I understand that, then I'll be able to train them and form a really close relationship with one someday. My business partner, um, Dr. Don Adams, has a PhD in biomechanics, so I eventually started talking to her and said, you know, we want the horse to move the best way possible. I'm aspiring to be a horse trainer myself, and so um, Joe has really helped me come a long way with confidence of just being around the horse and understand, understanding biomechanics. I, that's, that's a big one. I like looking see how is the horse moving. Is the horse moving correctly? What are the bio biomechanics of the horse moving? Because if they're moving correctly, it's also good for us. You're learning what's really going on with this horse. And if you are balanced, centered, you can connect to your horse to learn what's going on. If you know the science of biomechanics, you can watch your horse and go, eh, something doesn't quite look right there. What I've been doing is really focusing on breeds, disciplines, training methods, um, horse psychology, horse behavior. I've been very lucky to really watch the herd. I watch them and try and figure out what are they really doing as horses. Um, to me, the horse-human relationship isn't about competition. It's not about me projecting things onto the horse. It's about learning the horse is here and we're here. And lots of times we ask the horse to come all the way to us. And they've done that for centuries and that's great, but I think what we should do is find a middle ground. I think Joe's really good at, about uh, um, understanding what the horse is capable of doing and never asking him to do too much. Horse whispering isn't about isn't about whispering to the horse, it's about hearing the horse whisper to you. You have to be quiet for that. And we live in a, we live in a culture that you go in the pizza store and the TV's on, you go to the dentist and the radio's on, and everything is just loud, loud, loud. And the natural world is quiet. Horses are quiet. Um, what I've learned most from Joe, I think, is just patience and understanding that if you ask a horse to do something, it might not do it right that second. She listens to the horse and understands its movements and its reactions and uses that to have a better relationship with the horse. Instead of just getting angry if the horse does something wrong, she'll understand why it's upset and use that to form a closer relationship. We're quiet and the horse just moves under us. We don't make the horse move correctly, we allow them to move correctly because they know how to move. We may help them learn how to bring their back up and have their back stronger so that they don't get a sore back and it's more comfortable and they move better. But they, they know how to move. We need to kind of get out of their way. We need to work on ourselves a lot more sometimes than we do the horse. And once you're quiet, amazing things can happen with your horse. One of the, one of the coolest things I learned from Joe is, is quiet communication. It's magical. You can sit on a horse and just think something and they react. 
that was just a very special moment when it, when I could actually sit on Rodney and just thank Cantor, and he went right into it, and it was, um, you know, a flawless transition, and it feels so good when that happens. With Lucky, who is Joe's horse, I just remember when I first started riding her, I didn't understand how she operated and she didn't know what I was asking and I just remember Joe telling me something about relaxing your breath and taking a deep breath in and so then Lucky would relax and I just took a deep breath and I just remember relaxing my whole body and then Lucky relaxed and it was just a moment when she and I both understood what we wanted and what we were doing and it was just a great feeling. Everyone's looking for this magical connection and it's not, it's not about magic, it's about learning how to reconnect to the natural world the way we always used to be and we've pulled ourselves apart so if we balance center and connect then we can actually start feeling that relationship and you have to work on it it doesn't just happen like that it's always a work in progress and there are days where it just doesn't happen and there are days where you walk away going I have it forever and then the next day you don't but relationships are like that human relationships are like that she teaches you how to have a relationship with your horse and and one that um, both of you can learn and grow from I always tell people my goal is for them, whether they ever do it or not, is to be able to ride bareback and bridleless. That they have that kind of connection with the horse. Now, their horse may decide that they're going to go to the other side of the arena at some point because horses have their own mind. But they're going to feel like they have that relationship where they can work with the horse and say, no, let's go this way, let's go that way. There's so much more that people don't explore. And everybody stops and, and says, well, we're going to use this, this game or we're going to use this. But it, we can go farther. The Mustangs have taught me a lot in that regard. I took Annie down to train her, and I had her down, and there was a barrel in the arena, and I knocked it over, and she could have cared less. And I went and just pushed it with my foot to show where it rolled. And she looked at me with her head, and she put it down, and she pushed the barrel. And it was one of those moments where I thought, she's interacting more. And it's not anthropomorphizing to say she's understanding something, because she really is. We tend to either keep horses at kindergarten level and say this is this is the only thing they know or we go from learning numbers to calculus in a week and think they should know how to do this. And I think if people can learn there's more out there and there's a different way. So a lot of people think well I have to use side reins or I have to use a bit or I have to go to competition or I have to do it this way that's always been done or you know I have to use a flag to get my horse desensitized or there's all these other ways to do it. Joe is a great instructor. I would recommend her to anybody who wants to get into riding or who's been riding for years. Um, I rode for a long time and I feel like now I finally understand horses and I understand what I'm asking and even though I rode all those years I never really understood the horse and now I really understand her and I think that anybody who's ridden can learn a lot from Joe and learn a lot about horses and the relationships that can be formed. A horse should be a lifelong friend. Too many people get a horse and throw a horse away. It should be a lifelong friend. It's a relationship. You know, you stay together as long as, as long as it benefits both of you, not just the rider. And too many people just want to fix it and if it doesn't work, they get rid. No. Work on it. Learn about your horse. Learn about yourself. If you can learn all of this, then you can have the relationship you want. They teach me amazing things. We teach each other back and forth. That's what a mutual relationship is about. And that's, why I, that's what I call the horse-human relationship. And so what I've learned is to teach people we bring the science together of biomechanics and then bring the spirit of horsemanship which is about that feel and relationship. Because when you have all of that together, then you have this amazing relationship. It's a good time, it's a fun time, and you come around, you come away from it really relaxed and centered. Our lives in this culture are so difficult that if you can go be with your horse, whether you take a lesson for an hour a week or you're with your horse every day, that can actually help you be more balanced for what you have to deal with in the world.